My name is Ellen Ray and I majored in mechanical engineering and physics at Cleveland State. The Fluid Power Vehicle Challenge is an annual competition put on by the NFPA where uh, student teams from universities around the country, this year there were 15 teams, compete and they build a fluid powered vehicle to race in a sprint, endurance and efficiency challenge and there's also a design component that you present in like a presentation. This year because of COVID-19 the competition was held virtually so our vehicle was judged solely on design and on performance that we were able to present via like testing. So the bike is made of carbon fiber tubing so it's really lightweight and we use a lot of standard bicycle components on it which really sets it aside from the competition. Using off-the-shelf components and integrating those into our design really allows us to achieve better performance. The hydraulic system is very sophisticated and we use a series of valves and electronically controlled solenoid valve to achieve greater performance and better efficiency from the hydraulics. A lot of the things that we had experience with in a controlled setting, finite element analysis, in designing a hydraulic circuitry, we got to actually apply. We had to um, kind of define the problems ourselves and then solve them. As part of the competition, you either from year to year, you have to change either the frame or the hydraulic circuit, um, one of them uh, to compete. We actually decided that we were going to build our bike from the ground up. We didn't take anything from last year's team and we d redesigned the entire thing. What I really liked most about this project was the opportunity to learn about fluid power. This was something that I did not really have a lot of experience with beforehand, so this project really allowed me the opportunity to learn something new, as well as apply a lot of knowledge that I've been learning in class and that I've learned at my co-op. A lot of the networking and uh, contacts that I built up through uh, internships ended up being helpful just with reaching out to people when we needed help with something or even acquiring sponsorships. So industry contacts had a big part of it. And also our engineering class Classes. This bike encompasses everything, machine design from the frame, kinematics, choosing gear ratios. Uh, I think all of us spent time in the Parker Hannafin Motion Control Lab at Cleveland State where we learned about uh, basics of hydraulics that let us uh, design the circuit and gave us the background that we needed to build a good functioning circuit. So we used everything, <laughs> coursework, internships, everything. Uh, I really enjoyed um, applying different things that we've learned throughout our years at Cleveland State. Um, the bike incorporates dynamic and static loads and fluid dynamics, and we got to experience a lot of manufacturing. So the bike works by uh, a bunch of different modes. You can manually pedal where you're pedaling the bike and that's propelling the vehicle. That's one mode. Or you can charge the accumulator, which is kind of like a battery. It stores energy. And you can do that either manually by pedaling or electrically through an auxiliary power source like an electric drill. And then once you have that stored energy, you can actually open a valve and uh, essentially throttle and propel the bike without pedaling, which can help you like get up a hill or just go a lot faster if you want. And then there's also a regenerative braking feature on the handlebars. So every time you're stopping the bike, you're actually getting the energy back that's from that's propelling the bike and you're storing that for future use. My advice to future teams is to take Professor Bogdan's advice very literally to get started early and to um, really commit yourself to the project and put a lot of time into it. I think the most valuable piece of advice I give to someone going into this project is to really plan ahead. Do everything as early and as soon as you can and make mistakes rather than try to do it too perfectly. You're going to get out of it exactly what you put into it. In terms of building a good bike and a getting everything done on time, I would say that you need to become organized and get started building as soon as humanly possible. And also use your network. When you need help with something, reach out to an engineer that you know, a professor at Cleveland State, or maybe an engineer that works at a company that you're purchasing a product from. They will help you nine times out of 10, and you should utilize that networking.